Hey everybody, um, <clears throat> I saw a, uh, a thread uh, video um, just randomly going through uh, my subscriptions and uh, inspired me to do a, uh, a quick response. They're from uh, Buddy Bopper, and uh, so I'll get right into them. Um, your first question was, um, name one, one album you purchased because you had an emotional connection to a song. And uh, I guess I should have said it. I don't think any of these are going to be uh, predictable, so this will be sort of fun. Um, the first one is Ray Parker. It's um, A Woman Needs Love, which is the title track. Uh, that, that song, I guess, was probably a decent hit So because... You know, I was 11 or 12 when it came out. So if an 11 or 12 year old had an impression about a song, about a song, it, it probably was a pretty big radio hit. Um, so um, I probably had this on 45 or something back in the early 80s, and uh, I don't know when it was. Maybe a few years ago, I heard it, and uh, it really just struck a chord and reminded me. It brought me back to that that time from when I was a preteen, and uh, it's just a fun song. I mean, it's, it's, uh, he puts on this sort of real kind of over the top, silky, smooth voice, you know, singing about how, you know, if you're going to cheat on your woman, well, your woman might cheat on you. And, uh, so anyway, um, I, when I heard it, it just, since it brought back so many memories, I went out and wanted to get a copy of it on vinyl. And, uh, I had a copy of it, um, a few years back. And I was disappointed because it was in really rough, rough shape. And I came across this one that still was in shrink, and it's in excellent, in excellent shape. So it, it's a fun thing to put on every once in a while. And uh, it's not just just for memories too. I actually kind of enjoy it as well. So, um, what's next? One album in horrible shape. I bought just to fill a whole in my collection. I actually, as usual, have to kind of alter this question a little bit because I don't. I haven't really done that before, at least not yet. Um, but I can kind of go off and try to relate a little bit is that I got a record in, uh, for a band that I've been kind of amassing um, a collection of and I was disappointed. I got it on eBay and 99% of my experience on eBay has been really good um, but on, once in a blue moon I'll have a bad experience and one of them was when I got this record Queen's a Kind of Magic it's kind of hard to find. You don't really see it a whole lot in vinyl. And so I've occasionally been on it and been outbid. And uh, I finally won one. I got this one for four or five bucks or something like that on eBay. I think you, you start to see them a little more now, but you don't see them all the time. And uh, anyway, so uh, when I went to play it, I mean, the, the, the person said on the, the uh, listing that it was in very good plus shape. And when you look at the record immediately, you see it scuffed. And it, they were nice enough, actually, to uh, refund my money, including shipping. So I guess it's a happy ending to some degree. But uh, at some point, I'm going to have to look to get a, a new copy of that. Um, what's next? An album that instantly takes me back to a moment. Um, this is going to be sort of a cheat and easy, but actually, this is one of them. And this is partly... Well, I wanted, I, I love Queen anyway, so I was gonna, I'm going to be getting continue to, to try to get everything by them. But um, this album has a really sentimental, sentimental place for me. Um, this came out in 85, I believe. 85 or 86. 86, I think. And um, this is just, uh, I was 15 at the time, so and this is what, that was whenever I just started playing guitar. And me and one of my best friends, uh, when we were in school, when after school, we would, we would come home and fiddle around with with guitar and stuff and and listen to this on CD and I just have these strong memories of those times so if my, if my buddy sees this he'll, he'll get a chuckle out of it uh, we used to sit around on the weekends or after school and and not this probably is kind of silly even bring up because you don't really care I guess but uh, we would we would make uh, cheeseburger bacon cheeseburgers and listen to, to Queen <laughs> So that's sort of a strange uh, story, but uh, that was just sort of, that's maybe the senses too, right? thinking about those bacon cheeseburgers. Uh, brings back memories of sitting around playing guitar and listening to Queen. At the time, my buddy was a, a better guitar player than me, so I always kind of, you know, enjoyed listening to him, learning the solos and stuff. I'm actually going to make this a double album, 
because I have one other one that, that comes from that era that it really is something that I remember playing whenever I'd hang out with my buddy Art. And I think I had it on tape at the time. And it's uh, GTR. Um, I think this is pretty much just a one-off band. They have some other stuff that kind of came out, but they're really not proper albums. I think there's something like a... Uh, uh, some sort of live thing, and I don't even know if it's a proper release, in, but uh, really this is sort of a one-off uh, quote-unquote super group. Um, it's from the, the, the prog circles, so you got Steve Howell and Steve Hackett, so you got guys from Genesis and Yes, and the singer, I think his name's Max Bacon, yeah, Max Bacon, I don't, he, he was in other bands, but nothing of any real consequence, at least over here in the States. And the other players are all sort of lower, lesser known people. But uh, this is actually maybe, a, you know, occasionally you have these side projects in, in the, uh, the prog circles that are a little bit more pop. And uh, this is definitely an, a, you know, a mid 80s um, production, you know, pop production. Um, but I love, I actually enjoy it still. I actually, enjoy, it's not just for memory's sake. I actually enjoy listening to it. It's, it's definitely. I wouldn't say that it's aged well necessarily because it's got a very mid-80s production, lots of uh, um, echo and stuff, and uh, the vocalist is, you know, a lot of people, it's sort of the same thing, the reason why people, a lot of people don't like Rush is, you know, people don't like Italy's voice. Um, not that Max Bacon's voice is quite as uh, strange as, as Getty Lee's, but uh, um, it, he sings a lot in higher register, which, you know, it's going to turn some people off. But uh, anyway, this is just something that brings me back to about 1985, 1986. So, next one. An album that... Ins oh, wait, I just did that one. Sorry. <laughs> Biggest Guilty Pleasure. This is actually something I brought up in my own uh, question thread thing I did uh, yesterday. And I'm going to actually really put myself out on a limb here. Because it's easy to put out, you know, some of the stuff like, you know... You know, some of the 80s pop stuff. Sorry, my throat's killing me. But I'm going to really put myself out to uh, to get ribbed. So let me get a, a CD real quick. I guess I should have been prepared with this, but uh, this is not even my CD. Not that I have to preface it or anything, but uh, it's a group that I wouldn't say I necessarily li like a lot, but I enjoy listening to it whenever my wife puts it on. And uh, it's the Dixie Chicks. So I know I'm going to get you know, get some, some flack for that. But uh, again, it's not something I actually put on myself. But uh, I'm, I'm, it's kind of a big deal to me because I, I hate um, pop country. So, um, and they're not really like that. They, their productions are very, you know, slick. Like a lot of the, you know, the, the pop country stuff. But... They definitely have, tr they're truer to country roots. And uh, so, again, I figured I'd, I'd take a little bit bigger risk than we usually do. And that's when I would say it's a, a guilty pleasure, so to speak. But uh, I kind of enjoy that when we put it on now and again. What is my ritual or process when listening to records? I don't have any sort of strange superstitions or rituals or anything per se. Um, I actually listen to... Uh, what you see in the background, this is where I listen to my uh, my records. It's actually also my office. I work from home, so um, I, I tend to listen to my, my records during the day while I work. And um, I get to a little bit at night, but um, since, you know, I have a family, I'm married and stuff, sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to get back here and listen to music because, but you know, understandably, my wife wants me to spend time out there with the kids and stuff. So a lot of my time is spent working and listening to records. I'd actually eventually want like to get this set up out in the living room and try to listen. I mean, there's sort of pros and cons, you know, listening to uh, and listening to the music in my office. I get the privacy, but it's not as comfortable sitting in my office chair as opposed to sitting out on the couch and listening to music. So, I think I eventually want to get it out there. Um, let's see what we have. Now. Oh, your most embarrassing uh, moment on stage. I don't play in bands now, but I, I've been in several bands in the 90s and uh, the early 2000s. And I'm probably blocking a few. I'm sure that there's some worse ones, but I figured I'd just come up with something um, off the top of my head. Um, I, 
I was playing in a band and we were playing a pub that we played on a weekly basis. It was just a fun, fun place to play and have a few pints. And there was one night where um, the power was, was blowing, there was a fuse or something was blowing. So the PA everything went out and it went out a couple times. So uh, I guess that's pretty embarrassing. It's not like you were in front of a bunch of people. We are probably playing in front of 50 to 70 people. But uh, it's never good whenever you're sitting there strumming electric instruments that have no electricity. So uh, that's, that was pretty bad. Let's see. What artists or artists are you concentrating in your collection? Um, the funny thing is, is that I, I, in, I answered another th uh, thread about New Year's resolutions. And what it, what it was is that um, I want to start concentrating my purchases a little bit. I want to start buying um, more into artists where I want to start getting completed sets or closing in on completed sets on certain artists I like a lot. Um, but at the moment, I haven't done a lot of concentrating on, concentrating on certain artists. It's kind of some of it's happened by accident. Um, one artist is Frank Zappa. Um, I see somebody I've liked over the years, but it's not necessarily ha not that I have some sort of you know intense. Um, loyalty to his music it just kind of happened in a way that I've found that I'm bidding on on records every couple weeks and it's a Frank Zappa record and now I'm kind of enjoying I think I've got about 10 to 11 Frank Zappa records and I'm kind of enjoying seeing the, uh, the cl that catalog uh, amassing so um, there are a couple others as well um, mostly classic rock stuff like uh, Van Halen and, and Aerosmith I've got three or four of each of those and with Van Halen, they don't have a ton of stuff on vinyl, so I've only got about three records with, for them that I, I need to uh, to finish their catalog. So I think that was your last question. Anyway, these are pretty cool. So I um, hope you enjoyed them, and uh, see you next time.